Hey guys, today I'm going to be comparing the genuine GoPro brand waterproof housing with the cheapest one I could find on Amazon to see if a cheap one is as good for diving. The genuine GoPro one is available online for about $50 and this copy I found was the cheapest one I could find on Amazon and it was only $14 so it's a little over a quarter of the price. You can see on the box that the GoPro housing has a lifetime warranty and could potentially be a lot more durable for outdoor activities but we're looking purely at the diving abilities in this video. As you can see on the back of the box, the GoPro housing is rated for a maximum depth of 60 meters. The cheap housing also has a maximum depth of 60 meters, so they both should survive a test depth of just under 60. Let's have a look at what's inside each box. The GoPro housing contains a skeleton back door for outdoor use, which enables you to still use the touchscreen. It also contains a mount and then the actual housing. The housing looks pretty similar to previous generations of GoPro housings, with a thick glass lens cover and a double locking door mechanism as well as a power and record button. The copy housing also contains a mount as well as the housing. There was no skeleton door provided, so you won't be able to use the touchscreen along with this housing. This housing looks fairly similar to the GoPro housing, but a lot less rugged. It also feels quite a bit lighter. There's a glass lens cover and only a single backdoor locking mechanism as well as a power and record button. The quality of the materials in the mounts is also considerably different. Just having a look at the two housings side by side, they're pretty similar but the GoPro one looks and feels a lot more solid and you can see the mechanism on top of the GoPro housing looks a lot more substantial than on the copy. The buttons on the copy have stainless steel caps, which is a bit different to the plastic ones on the GoPro housing, although they both look similar internally. Opening up the GoPro housing, the mechanism feels solid and gives you a bit of confidence that your GoPro is secured inside the housing and the door is held tightly closed. When opening up the copy housing, you'll notice that there's no lock mechanism on the top to hold it in place. There's also a lot more movement around the hinge, it almost feels as if it's a bit loose. Here's a close-up of the two locking mechanisms open. Other than the colour, the internal back door seals look similar. The two lenses look quite different. And although the GoPro one has a number of screws around it, I haven't seen anything online to suggest that it can be replaced. We'll maybe try that out in another video. Let's test how the GoPro fits into each housing. As 
As expected, it fits snugly into the GoPro housing and has a great rugged look. The fit into the cheap housing is as good as on the GoPro housing, although it doesn't look as rugged but it still feels good enough to take on a dive. I'm going to be putting a couple of these water indicator stickers into each housing along the length of the seals and near the buttonholes to indicate if any water has seeped through. The white part of these stickers turns red once they've been in contact with water. You'll notice that the back of the stickers are red. Keep this in mind later on as we'll be looking for the front of the stickers to turn red if any water gets through. The GoPro housing has rubber pads along the length of the back door seals, so I'll be putting them on either end. I'll also be putting a weight into each housing to keep them completely submerged. I'm going to be doing the test without a GoPro in either housing so that there's no internal support. This will put the most pressure onto the case and allow it to flex inwards so if there's any weak points on either case they'll have the best chance of showing up. I'll be putting a diving watch in next to the housing so that we can keep track of the depth and the duration of the dive. If there are any failures then we should be able to see at what depth they occur. We're now ready to go, so let's start our dive. We're now approaching our maximum depth of 56 meters, a little under their 60 meter rating. Keep in mind that this is without the GoPro inside the cases, which provide for a bit of extra support. So far both cases look like they're holding up fine, and none of the indicators visible in the shot have turned red. We'll now keep them at this depth for 10 minutes to allow the water time to seep through. A 
Okay, 10 minutes has now passed, so let's bring them back up to the surface. Have a look at these two sped up shots of the resurfacing and you can see how much the housings and seals flex under the pressure of almost 60 meters of water. Let's take our housings out and take a closer look at them. The watch is now showing a resurfacing time of around 2 minutes and a maximum depth reached of 56.2 meters. The copy housing doesn't seem to be damaged in any way and the stickers all look good from the outside. The GoPro housing also still looks good and all the stickers also look like they're still white. Looking at the diving watch, you'll see that we had a maximum depth of 56.2 meters and the total dive time was just over 15 minutes. Let's open up the GoPro housing and see if any water got into it. The back door has been squashed into place and has become really tight. All of the stickers are still white and there's no visible water inside the housing. It is completely dry. Now let's take a look at the cheap housing. The stickers in the cheap housing are all still white and there are no signs of water inside the housing either. So it looks like a cheap housing is as good as the GoPro branded housing for diving, which is actually quite surprising. I thought the cheap housing would survive to a depth of around 30 meters, but not all the way up to 60 meters, and especially not without a GoPro inside it. So if you're going to be using your Hero 8 purely for diving, then you can save some money and get a cheaper diving housing. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any other suggestions for dive tests you'd like to see done. And remember to subscribe for more tech related videos, repairs and tests.